Dating and relationships is a hot topic, especially in the disability community. A lot of us wonder, is that an experience we'll have? So when it does happen, heads turn, ears perk up, and eyes are opened to see what dating with a disability looks like. Before we jump into today's episode, I wanna remind you to please subscribe and share. Also, if you'd like to learn more and meet our community in a deeper way, join our Facebook group called Victoriously Living. And if you'd like to support us, you can do that at patreon.com forward slash One Leg Up Productions. Hi, welcome to Chair Chats, the lifestyle talk show with a disability twist. I'm your host, Pauline Victoria. Today we're talking with a couple who is influencing the way dating someone with a disability is perceived through their YouTube channel, Roll with Cole and Charisma. Cole and Charisma, thank you so much for joining us today. We are so excited to be able to get to know you guys and see what you're doing to expand the perspectives of dating someone with a disability. Uh, and you're doing it so well. So I'm honored to have you. <laughs> Thank you. We're honored to be here. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay. So let's just start at the beginning for those of our audience members who don't know your story. Can you tell us about how you met uh, mm -hmm. and what your motivation behind Roll With Cole and Charisma is. Yeah, we met a few years, a couple of years ago, two about two and a half years, years ago. Yes. And it was at a hospital, it was sheltering arms, and mm -hmm. I would go in there to work out. They have like a community-based program. Mm -hmm. And um, I was dating a girl at one time, <laughs> and uh, that did not work out but that drew her interest and yes. then what ended up happening was my therapist started playing wingman and wing woman and encouraging us to take notice of each other mm -hmm. and uh we went to a sheltering arms gala that like hospital sponsored gala mm -hmm. and i did take notice of her she was looking very nice in this blue dress green. it's blue green dress it's blue <laughs> and um she was beautiful and i noticed later that night when i got home from this gala that she had followed me on instagram mm -hmm. so i was like hmm what's going on here mm -hmm. and so i liked some of her pictures back and then she liked some more of mine and then i slid into the dms yes because that was uh that was enough for me in our millennial world to know that she was flirting with me yes very 21st century but it worked yeah. mm -hmm. i was gonna say <laughs> Yeah, it is. And I have no shame because I got the girl and yeah. that's what matters. Yeah. And we, we hadn't met each other in person and knew each mm -hmm. other in person, but it was just quick and easy way to get each other's numbers. So yeah. that worked. <laughs> yeah, it was. And then the channel really was her idea. Like, yes. Yeah. A lot of people were coming up to me, asking me questions like, how does your relationship work? What kind of things do you do? Like, tell me mm -hmm. more about you, you guys. And I challenges and obstacles. Yes. And I was like, okay, well, why don't we start a YouTube channel? So mm -hmm. I was in the car with Cole and I just looked at him and I said, do you want to start a YouTube channel? And he was like, sure. Yeah. Like very <laughs> skeptical, but saying yes, because it was the beginning of our relationship. So I just liked her. And I was like, whatever you want to do, I'll do it. Just don't leave me, please. <laughs> Good man. Good man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I whipped out my phone and we recorded our very first video on my iPhone. Yeah. Eating Chick-fil-A in a car in a dark parking lot. Yep. Mm. Yep. And it was after the first, very first time we did a car transfer by ourselves. And mm. so we talked about that. And then we finally got a, a newer camera and we just kept upgrading our cameras mm. after that. But yeah. we fell in love with the whole filming and editing world, which we never thought we would. Yeah. And actually creativity strikes at random moments. And yes. I just had an idea. We should go back to that parking spot yeah. <laughs> and that'll let, we can do a new transfer because we're a lot better at transferring yeah. now into the car and then go back to the parking lot. Yeah. Like, this is where it all started right here. Yeah. Yeah. Be cool you like video. a before and after you had yeah. me yet. Let's start a YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. That's yeah. Great. You did have me. 
I mean, I wasn't all that into it in the beginning, but like, I just wanted to please her. But I really did grow to love it, like especially the whole creative process from thinking about what are we going to film? How are we going to film it? What equipment are we going to use? How are we going to edit it? And then we got to post it. So like that whole process from start to finish is actually really fun and really fulfilling and rewarding because at the end of it, you have this really cool piece of work that you can be proud of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's documenting your relationship as it unfolds in front of over 300,000 people. No pressure, no guys. No pressure. I can't tell you how many baby comments we get. Oh my gosh. We should have had a baby 10 months ago. Yeah. We should have had four. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I guess if you put everything online, it, it has to speed up the process, the instant gratification, right? Yeah. So. yeah for them. We, we try not to let that affect our relationship yeah, we, timeline. We wait until everything feels right for us before we take any next step. Mm -hmm. um, like people wanted me to propose as soon as we started the YouTube channel, yeah. but I, I waited to make sure. You probably would have right. liked me to propose earlier. But. I mean, <laughs> when the time was right, the time was right. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Cole or Charisma, who got more? So Charisma, you said, I got a lot of questions from my friends about how it was like dating Cole. Cole, did you get questions about, <laughs> about like, how right. is it dating Charisma? I, I really, I really didn't. Although it was, it was amusing to me when we started dating and I was like, yeah, like I have a girlfriend now to someone who didn't know. And they'd be like, oh, who is it? I would say charisma. And I could watch their gears turn for a second as they figured out, oh, it's a black girl. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, cool. Okay. <laughs> but like, they just didn't expect that. So that was just amusing for me. Mm -hmm. Like everybody's been super supportive, but uh, it was just unexpected, I guess. Ooh, that and like, you don't really hear the name charisma too often. That's so true. It's like, so wait. it's a cool name. They're like surprised. Oh, that's a cool name. But wait, that means, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So but, you uh, think you think your the people got more hung up on it being an interracial thing for, on your side, Cole, and on your side, charisma was it more like be, a disabled thing? That's a really good question. It is a good question. Uh, I would say people got a little more hung up on the race with me in the beginning, but that's not because they weren't like used to being around black people. I think that was more because they were so used to me being in a chair mm -hmm. that um the only thing different was the interracial yeah mm -hmm. yeah exactly yeah mm -hmm. so I sense. mean did you what do you think I, yeah for me I mean that makes sense because I've never dated someone in a wheelchair you know that was the first thing that people had questions about and commented on um Nate I've always and you had dated outside of the race yeah I've been in an interracial relationship multiple times so that wasn't new to my right. family or friends but you know, being in an interable relationship was new, but my family and friends have always been supportive from mm -hmm. the beginning. So, I mean, yeah. it, it has been great. Our Both sides of our families have been mm -hmm. very supportive, making things so yeah. much easier for us. All the questions that did go to Charisma, yeah. because I, I think people are uncomfortable asking me things. Yeah. So the people that I knew on my side, they knew the answers already. Mm -hmm. So most of it were on her side. They didn't want to ask me. They wanted to ask her because they were more comfortable mm -hmm. uh, with her. But now that everybody's comfortable with everybody it's very open and everybody's yes. very transparent yeah. yeah what's the number one question you get mm. Ooh. the number one question i think like at the beginning from family and friends the number one question i would get was regarding like activities like what what kind of things do you like to do for fun like can you guys like prisma i know you love to hike mm -hmm. can cole go hiking with you are you going to take him hiking one day mm -hmm. so it's like they, a lot of people were asking if i were going to take Cole yeah. on activities and trips that I love to do to see if, you know, we can do it together. I feel like people also asked you, are you ready for everything? Yeah. Like, can you mm -hmm. handle all of this? Mm -hmm. um, which sucks for me to hear because all of this yeah. means me, you know? Yeah. Right. Yeah, I think that my family and friends were aware, especially because a lot of my friends were in the therapy world, mm -hmm. and they were aware of what when goes – yeah into you know an interabled relationship and with someone who doesn't you know have as much much function and so they were just wondering like do you understand like I guess like what goes into it but that was the last thing I thought about truly like yeah my first thing was dude I, I need to get this guy to like me does he like me like <laughs> how can I impress him and so Man, it's different I was so ready on our first date for her to just pepper me with questions about all right, what level are you? Can mm -hmm. you use this? Can you do that? How do you transfer? Like all of those types of questions. Mm -hmm. And we didn't, we didn't go there at all. Hardly. Mm -hmm. It was just, 
I was asking her about her past and her family, where she came from, who she was as a person, and she did the same with me. Yeah. And that was so refreshing. I was I was so ready to just answer. <laughs> I was so ready for an interview, and yeah. it was just a conversation. It was. was. We talked about high school, college. Yeah. We talked about Cole's injury, like, one time, because I just didn't know how he got hurt, and I was yeah. just curious. But that was, like, at the very end of dinner. Like, right, we right. had a long conversation beforehand. Yeah. We are basically best friends at that point. <laughs> 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 one dinner and it's all it takes yeah. i know it kind of is with her she has this weird uncanny ability to meet someone and then two seconds later like hear their deepest darkest secret it's it's, it's, it's really weird. strange it's weird yeah i it happens to me every time every time i meet someone new i'm just having a simple conversation and then by the end of it they're like pouring the whole their whole world I know. to me it's and crazy. crying and i'm like oh what did i do <laughs> like i just wanted to talk the secret is she's drugging everyone no, <laughs> no. <laughs> her amazing personality and yes. yeah. it's the exactly. charisma, the charisma. <laughs> exactly you truly live out your name that is awesome thank you thank you um so that's really telling about really what is at the foundation of a relationship it's not necessarily yeah. what are the physical details of everything it's how do you connect at a more soul-to-soul -soul level um yeah and i think a lot of people with disabilities forget that that's where it starts like i remember my husband's in my first date there was just it was just easy conversation about who we are as people and not so much like uh so how like it, it, awkwardness there was no awkwardness there right because there was more to there's more to the interest than just understanding the technicalities i guess cole if you were to advise people with disabilities who think oh no one will ever date me um, yeah. I don't know if I'll, I'll ever be seen as a potential partner. I don't know if I'll ever be seen as someone more than just someone they have to take care of. Like, what advice would you give them? Well, I, I definitely felt that way myself um, for a long time. And I didn't really go on that many dates or have many relationships because that's how I felt. Is I, I didn't think that I would be attracted to someone. And so I, I never put myself out there and I never had the confidence and um, because confidence is so attractive to people, mm -hmm. I don't think, I think I was just ruining myself by, um, by thinking, by having that mindset or belief. So my recommendation or my advice would just be, even if you don't feel confident, act confident. I mean, mm -hmm. fake it till you become it. I mean, that's basically what I did is I got to a point where I was like, I just want to, I want to be someone I understand. And I know that I have a lot to offer. I have a lot of love to give and I'm, I'm a competent human being and a caring and compassionate human being. So these are all traits that someone should appreciate. And so I was like, screw it. I'm just going to put myself out there and maybe I'm not entirely confident, but I'm, I'm just going to give it my all, see what happens. And that's mm -hmm. what I did. And that, that's what worked out. So if you're not feeling confident, just fake it, fake mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's fine. That's okay. Yeah. And I think one thing for you, I remember you telling me what helped with your confidence was things you were accomplishing in your life. Yeah, that's true. So when you graduated college and high school and you mm -hmm. were getting, you know, started your nonprofit and you just had all these things mm -hmm. about you that you felt like you can share and talk about and be so proud of, it just made yeah. you feel more confident. Even if you didn't have that, you know, the love of your life in your, in your life, you had mm -hmm. something that still made you proud and happy. Right. I would have been a lot more nervous about a conversation on our first date if I didn't have anything to talk about. Mm -hmm. If I couldn't talk about graduating from school, if I couldn't talk about um, the business I started in real estate, like mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. If there's nothing to talk about, you have no fodder for conversation. Yeah. And so yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. Things that you're proud of help and then just fake that confidence. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's actually a really good takeaway for someone who's watching this even when you're single just work on yourself you know and mm -hmm. build yourself up because when you do have that special person come into your life there's more of you to give Absolutely. and contribute to the relationship because you're coming as a whole person not as someone waiting for someone to complete you 
as yes. Jerry Maguire says. Yeah. <laughs> it's so that was true. Deep. If, deep. You have to learn to love yourself before others can love you. And yeah. I think a lot of people forget that, you know, with a disability and without a disability. Mm-hmm. And you, I didn't love myself. Yeah, yeah. You that's the first the first step to finding love is finding that in yourself. Mm-hmm. And charisma. Um I know that there, so I have been told, uh, you know, when I was younger, like in high school or college, and you have the chemistry with a guy and you're flirting, and then he'll say, wow, you are really pretty for a girl in a wheelchair. And so it's like, okay, so if I wasn't in a wheelchair, would we have taken this to the next level? Mm -hmm. Um, And so there may be a lot of able-bodied people out there who are like, well, I I'm starting to have feelings for this person or I feel attracted to this person, but I'm scared. Mm -hmm. What would you say to them? Man, that's a tough one because, you know, I've experienced that. Well, I was going to say in a strange way, not a strange way, but in a way I've experienced that myself personally, like I've gotten growing up, Oh, you're really pretty for a black girl. Like I've gotten that too. (laughs) That's so it's so racist. I know. Well, I know, oh but it's, you guys get the same thing. Yeah, I've gotten the same exact thing. So it's I can relate, you know, in a, a different way to that that feeling. And my thing is just look at the person for who they are. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like everyone's just so surface level when it comes to love mm-hmm. and getting to know people. It's like it's more about what's inside and what's deeper. In, within that person and yeah. just learn to get to know people for who they are and not what they are, what they do, what they look like. Mm-hmm. Um, that reminds me of a, like, it's basically a backhanded compliment. It's like, yeah. you're pretty for a girl in a wheelchair. You're pretty for a black girl. It's mm-hmm. like, okay, that's slap me in the face while you, you know, tell me I'm pretty. But mm-hmm. I feel like we get the same thing or you get the same thing when people talk about how like you're an angel. It's like, you're such an angel for yeah. what you do, which on the surface is like, okay, that's very nice. Thank you. But then you think about it. Like, why am I an angel? What, because I care or I'm in love with someone in a wheelchair? Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, and I, I hated that comment. I still don't like it. But at the beginning, it would really bother me so much. Because yeah. it's like, why do I have to be an angel to be with someone? Why does it take an angel? Mm-hmm. Like, something like you cannot really, <laughs> like, no one's an angel on this well, earth. <laughs> Charisma is an angel. No, no. But, yeah. But not, why, not because she cares for me. Yeah. I mean, that's, of course that's part of it, but. See, now I'm talking about something. But it's like this this pity. Like, everyone just, yeah. like, it's like, I, I, there's this pity there that shouldn't be there. Like, it's like, it's like I'm a chair case. Yeah, and mm-hmm. it, that's not the case at all. Like, I love him because of who he is on the inside and because he's freaking gorgeous. Mm-hmm. And, like, that's what matters. You are too, love. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I just, I don't know. It's, it's a tough situation. Um, and I get the whole fear um, when you start to date someone, you know, who is differently abled, because I've been there and it was just the fear of the unknown. Like when yeah. you don't know what's happening or you don't know, like you don't know the situation a hundred percent, you're really fearful yeah. of like, what could yeah. happen? Like, you know, I was afraid that he may, may fall one day and how can I get him up or, you know, yeah, I've so never fallen things. out of my chair, but she no. was thinking about that. Yeah, yeah. There's just, I think it's just the fear of the unknown that really gets people when they, yeah. And you were trying to get rid of that unknown after our first date. Yeah. She literally went mm-hmm. home and searched with her weddings. Yeah. So like she was immediately learning, mm-hmm. like trying to figure out, okay, what is this going to look like? Yeah. Can this be my future? Am I okay? Uh, am I okay with this being my future? Yeah. And then like, I, I read a bunch of blogs about, you know, uh, women dating men in wheelchairs and they had a kid and how was that process? Mm-hmm. And you know, what the father was able to do with his function. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, when you start learning about what goes into all of it, you're like, Oh, okay. You feel more confident. And like, yeah. you're just like, okay, I can do this. Right, like, right. But it's just like the fear of the, the unknown. I think that gets people. Yeah, I agree. Charisma, I have a question for you because I know as um, my husband's Mm able-bodied and as the person who's with a disability in the couple, I often feel like, oh, he does so much, Mm -hmm. right, for me. Mm -hmm. What is it that I give to him? What value does he Mm -hmm. see in me that makes that all worth it? Mm -hmm. (laughs) She's a great interviewer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she is. <laughs> You're good at this. Go ahead. You want me to answer? This is going to be a tough one. Go ahead. It's your question. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so 
That, that is a really good question. And people ask that a lot on YouTube. Like, mm -hmm. why is she with him? Like, she does all of this for him, and he's not doing anything yeah. in return. And that's the I've been called, like, a half man and stuff. Yeah, and it's just... I know, it's terrible. It's terrible. Um, but Colt does so much for me. And I'm the type of woman, I am very independent. Um, mm. When it comes to physical things, I'm like, I got this. Like, let me do it. And I, I grew up with three brothers. I'm very tough. Mm -hmm. Like, I just, my dad always made sure I knew how to change a tire when I was 12 years old. I did this, I did that. So what I needed from a man was that emotional support. Like, I truly needed someone who was there for me emotionally, someone who mm -hmm. could make me laugh, someone who could make me smile. And that's, Cole had all of that and, and more. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of people think that a man needs to pro provide for a woman physically. And for me, that wasn't the case. I was the one, I was ready to have, mm -hmm. be the breadwinner when I married yeah. and, like, you know, being head of the household. Like, that was <laughs> me. Um, mm -hmm. Not saying that's the case now, but... I think Cole brings that emotional support that I have always needed that I didn't realize I needed until mm -hmm. I met him. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm doing it. But he also, you also have that, you helped me a lot physically what? too. Yeah. Like Cole is very good at trying to be more independent independent, and seeing what he can do to help me. So he's like mm -hmm. trying to sweep and try, he's transferring on his own now and it really helps out a lot. And just the fact that he is trying to be more independent and help me do less work means the world to me. Yay. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Thank Thank you. You. Mm, you, you did that on purpose to make me feel good, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, and it goes to show that, you know, as long as we're trying to meet each other, you know, within yeah. our abilities. Um, and that was so insightful. I got literally goosebumps when you were saying Aww. that because I think sometimes, maybe because my husband's the man. Like he has a hard time articulating. He's like, I don't know. You just, you do so much. And I'm like, but what, what, what is it? Like as women, we just want to know. Um, yeah, and right. so <laughs> I'm, I'm thank you for letting us into your heart and understanding what Cole provides you. Um, and then, so I guess Cole, besides yeah. the physical stuff, that stuff is, you know, we're all gonna, mm -hmm. we, we do what we got to do. Right. So mm -hmm. what value Mm -hmm. um or contributions does charisma bring to your life uh I, I think charisma from the beginning has really elevated just who i am as a person mm -hmm. um she's the one who's encouraged me and motivated me to be more uh independent and to start doing those transfers on my own and start trying to help out with chores that i can accomplish um and i i love that because for a long time i was just kind of coasting and also professionally, I mean, we've we've been able to do awesome things professionally that I never dreamed of by myself. And I think it really boils down to our chemistry and us being a really good team. And Charisma was the one that started that. She came up with the idea. She was like, you know, we could really do something special with this. And she is like, I do all the editing for the videos and like people can recognize that, but she's the one that really is the glue keeping everything else together, like responding to comments and making sure our search search engine optimization is all the way up there and like finding the right title and thumbnail like she's constantly making sure um everything is accounted for and everything makes sense and Aww. she's a glue thank and, you yeah you are too and i was gonna you made a good point about um finding like me helping you find who you are and your passion in mm -hmm. life and i feel like it that's the same for me you did that for me because mm -hmm. i thought i wanted to be an ot go down the health yeah. field and without Cole, I wouldn't have realized how much I love sharing our story, but also telling other stories, how much I love filming and mm -hmm. editing and, you know, all of this. I, I truly love it. And I wouldn't have learned any of that if it weren't for Cole. And you really brought out that mm -hmm. entrepreneurship in me. I was like, yeah. what? I'm an entrepreneur. Says who? And <laughs> She's starting to use big, like, business words. I'm <laughs> like, whoa, that was really good use of that word, babe. <laughs> Wait, let me look that up real quick in the dictionary. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, you, Cole's really helped me find who I am. You know, I feel like I, I knew how to love myself, but I just didn't really find my purpose in life. And Cole really brought that out in me. So we balance each other out really well. well. I love it. That's what a relationship's supposed to be. I yeah. feel like two people come together with a certain level of ability mm -hmm. or potential. And as a team, that is just so much higher. Your ceiling mm -hmm. is so much higher or just removed entirely. And that's what I feel like has 
has happened with us. It's like we both had a ceiling and a direction and then we just blew our worlds open. And now, you know, who knows where we're going. Mm -hmm. Isn't that an ideal relationship? Helping yeah. the other person become the best version of themselves, right? Yes. So, that's what it's all about. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Um, how much does the disability impact the relationship? That's a good question. I, I do think it has a significant impact on the relationship. Oh, yeah. um, it's just how you handle it that matters. So, I mean, yeah, it's a lot different. Like she has to help me get up and like we have a two hour morning routine. Um, and so just starting the day, we got to get up earlier. Maybe we're more tired and like that's exhausting day after day but we handle it as gracefully as we can. And we try to be open if one of us is getting tired and um, communicate all of our feelings transparently and often. Yeah. And um, by doing that, we can lessen the impact and it's a little bit smoother and easier to handle. And I also think that having this type of relationship in, you know, the disability, I think it's brought us closer because we have that intimate intimacy that, I've never experienced before in dating someone who is able-bodied. I, we just, we find intimate moments and in random things that yeah. we do and we're so close. And like when we get in bed at night, like, or whenever we're so close together, like if one of us is upset, like we have to talk about it because yeah. it is awkward. It's so awkward. We're, we're awkward. literally this close, yeah. like doing a transfer and like we're both trying to ignore each other. It's, like, <laughs> it's not going to work. It just doesn't work. So it forces us to communicate and talk about our feelings and be open and understanding. Um, and I feel like I wouldn't have that level of understanding with someone if it weren't for the situation we were in. Because yeah. I've, I've been in a relationship for five and a half years. Mm -hmm. And you think by five and a half years, you would learn to understand each other. But no, <laughs> not at all. It's, it's almost like uh, if you're on a platoon or a squadron mm -hmm. or something in the military and all of your, you go through boot camp with your brothers or sisters and you grow together and you have this like unbreakable bond because of what you've been through. Yeah. We've been through a lot. Like we've been in a hotel where I fell on the floor, like mm -hmm. bleeding. And, you know, we got through that together. And now it's like, there's nothing that's going to stop us. We got know? this. We got yeah. it. Anything that this world throws at us, we can handle it as long as we have each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know with the quarantine, I'm like, okay, so is the divorce rate going to go up? Because yeah. some couples, oh, yeah. I just like, they cannot handle them each other in the mm -hmm. same house 24 seven. And I know when I got pregnant after the five month mark, my, because my body was changing so much, how I had a function was no longer applicable. I couldn't even bend down to get food and, you know, transfer yeah. myself. So my husband and I were literally attached at the hip 24 seven. Like he would drive me to work, sit there if I needed anything. <laughs> like, and I'm like, okay, if we can get through this, we can get through anything. And so, right. yeah, I totally agree with you there that the disability will, can either make or break a couple. Oh, um, and sure. is very yeah. telling and revealing about, okay, what is it that can, can we handle as a couple and as individuals? So yeah, that's awesome. I'm going to wind down with this last question and okay. ask you guys, um, and you can each answer from your own perspective. What are the three keys to a successful relationship? Mm. Three. So we go back and forth. I know the number one, we always talk about this, communication. Yeah, you can take that communication one. Communication is so important. And I, because I was in a long-term relationship before Cole, I feel like I realized that communication is important. And because you, this, I'm your first longest relationship, I'm mm -hmm. your longest relationship. And so for you, learning communication took a little bit longer just because yeah. it was so mm -hmm. new to you. Mm -hmm. And so we've had conversations, like, I'm just like, we need to communicate because that's what's going to make or break us. Like yeah. if we don't talk about our feelings, if we don't talk about our plans for the day, like it's just going to like make things up, make things harder. So mm -hmm. communication I think is number one. <laughs> yeah, I, I would agree. Mm -hmm. uh, I would also say trust is hugely important. Yeah. Um, like I, I put a lot of trust and charisma, like being able to like care good for me and do mm -hmm. these things and like do these tasks adequately. So like I don't end up, with a, like having an accident later on. Mm -hmm. Like there's a lot of trust, trust there. And when we're transferring, I got to trust that I'm not going to end up on the floor. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I have to so, trust myself too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And of course that goes for like the regular things too, with just yeah. trusting that 
you know, she doesn't have an able-bodied person on the side because I'm not enough or something, yeah. which I, I you. know would never be the case. <laughs> you got no, no person on the side? No, I'm just uh-uh. kidding. <laughs> uh-uh. um, so trust is yeah. big in my book. Yes. And I think another one is being open. Mm-hmm. And, you know, this- my next one. You're going to say that too? <laughs> um, I think being open is very important for- interabled relationships as well as able-bodied relationships but specifically interabled relationships because there's so many things that are different Mm -hmm. between you and your partner and you have to be open to you know learning what's different and then accepting what's different um between you two whether it's you know physical ability or even like personality wise like everyone Mm -hmm. is so different yeah and and when it comes to intimacy intimacy as well you have to be open you know to communicating Mm-hmm. about that and yeah. um just trying different things um it's not going to be normal it, yeah. but if you're open it can be mm-hmm. still fulfilling yeah so i think being open and communicating mm-hmm. and trusting is three that was a lot keys. <laughs> yeah oh wait i said trusting okay yeah. never mind um <laughs> uh, my next one i'd have to say is uh patience yes so the in this kind of relationship or at least in our instance mm-hmm. i mean there are definitely things that can build up over time um like frustrations or just like getting tired or whatever and there are definitely challenging moments where all that kind of comes to a head and Mm -hmm. you get frustrated and you start getting choppy with one another or tone shifts and you just on both sides have to be patient and get through that and understand where it's coming from and that you know it's not really it's it's not about one person to the other it's just about what's happening and yeah you just got to be patient and mm-hmm. similarly like with what you said with being open like learning each other you have to be patient as she figures out how i do things or yeah. she's encouraging me to like do ic's on my own or like go to the bathroom on my own um that might take me a long time but it, that that patience if i can do it and then get good at it then in the long run we're better off mm-hmm. i agree i have one more love what? love is important yeah. i think it remembering you know why you love that person even if they, they make you so sad mm-hmm. or you're just so like tired and done with it, just mm-hmm. remember why you love that person and why you chose that person to begin with. Yeah. And I feel like if you remember the love, you guys can get through anything. I think a lot of people just forget, you know, yeah. why that person makes them feel the way they do, why they make them so happy. Um, yeah. And so if you just remember that love, I feel like you can get through a lot. Yeah, and that reminds me of what I, I'll have as my last one, <laughs> uh, which is adoration. Uh, mm-hmm. I I feel like it's really helpful for me to just take a moment some days and look at her and just be like, I adore that girl. Aww. She's awesome. I just love her. Aww. And making sure I keep those moments every day helps me be more patient on the more trying moments or um, help me trust her so I can just look at her and be like, I adore her, trust her. She can do whatever she wants. I know it's going to be great. Oh, so. thank you. Love you too. Mm-hmm. Oh, I adore you too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I know that when appropriate? I, <laughs> that's totally good. Um, I know when my dad, when I told my dad that I was getting married, he gave me some advice and I was like, what, what does that mean? And I, I realized the magnitude of it later. He said, okay, don't forget to always say please and thank you. Um, you think I'm a rude person you don't think I'm you know like but what it I think comes down to is related to what the the word you use it's adoration is gratitude and just not taking that person for granted um and so I think that's so important to to do that to both on both sides right yeah absolutely Mm -hmm. it was directed to me but you know, it's nice to know that I'm appreciated by my husband as well. So that's a nice reminder. I feel like sometimes it's easy when someone's doing something so often, it's hard to remember to say thank you, but that's a good reminder. And so important. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you guys. Thank you. you. This was a great interview. And I really appreciate that you took the time to come up with some original and awesome questions. Yeah, I was going to say that too. You know, we've we've done a lot of interviews, but it's always refreshing to hear like new questions, you know, like, oh, that makes us think. Yeah. And I I love that. You're a great interviewer. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. Well, I am so glad I had the opportunity to make you think and to bring this to our, our community Um, hopefully that it will expand on both sides, what inner day, inner able dating looks like. Um, and so I want to remind you, the viewers, 
If you're watching this and you haven't yet subscribed, to please subscribe and share this video with anyone you think will benefit from it. Also, if you'd like to join uh, my Facebook group, you can do that, and it's called Victoriously Living. And if you'd like to see more from One Leg Up Productions, please support us at patreon.com forward slash One Leg Up Productions. Thank you so much, and until we meet again, be blessed.